Good evening, everybody. I'm Dr. Vinitra doing second year DNB radiology residency at Billroth Hospitals, Chennai. My topic for today is uh, tit for tat, a case series of uh, vascular and hollow viscous compressions. And why is it called, for, uh, called tit for tat? We'll see that in upcoming slides. Introduction, abdominal pelvic vascular compression syndromes comprise of either compression of hollow viscera by adjacent blood vessels. Examples include Wilkie's syndrome, urethropelvic junction obstruction, portal biliopathy, or the other way around. That is the compression of vessels by adjacent structures. As examples for this include Van Bar syndrome, Nutcracker syndrome, and May Turner syndrome. These syndromes can be diagnosed uh, incidentally in asymptomatic patients or those who come with atypical symptoms. Uh, these patients are never going to come, us, uh, come to us with a direct clinical picture. In this case series is an extended list of three other unexplored compressions with, uh, who came to us with varied presentations. The aims and objectives of this paper is to share our department's experience in witnessing few interesting imaging findings and their radiological diagnosis uh, and how we arrived at that diagnosis in such unusual clinical settings. This is my case one. A 22-year-old male presented with complaints of postprandial epigastric discomfort uh, in digestion, reflex, and regurgitation for past one year. Uh, the medical gastro team, they proceeded with upper GI scopy, which did not reveal any significant finding. Patient symptoms were not relieved by proton pump inhibitors or the routine anti-reflex medications. Uh, the patient came referred to us for CCT abdomen which showed us compression of a mid, mid portion of D3 segment of duodenum between uh, SMD, its venous tributaries, and iota. And we also saw that stomach D1 and D2 segments of duodenum appeared distended. This is figure one, venous face, uh, CCT abdomen axial sections taken at the level of D3 segment, which is showing us uh, this uh, D3 segment is shown by the yellow arrow, which is getting sandwiched between um, S and B, which is showed by the star, and iota, which is shown by the arrowhead. The other two images are also showing the same thing, that is the D3 segment of theodinum getting compressed between S and B, its tributaries, and iota on the other side. This is the CCT abdomen venous face oblique coronal section, which is showing us the similar findings. Moving on to, uh, uh, in order to confirm the functional status of this kind of obstruction, we proceeded with the barium male study, which showed us a distension of second and proximal third parts of the duodenum with a persistent filling defect at mid portion of D3, likely due to an extrinsic compression. And uh, this is the figure three, which is the RA RAO projection, uh, showing us a contrast filled uh, uh, stomach C loop of duodenum with an extrinsic compression at mid portion of D3. And this is figure four, supine AP projection, which is showing us partial holdup of contrast in D2 and proximal D3 segments with a persistent filling defect at mid D3 segment. And so our diagnosis very well becomes SM, SMA-like syndrome or SMD syndrome. Discussion. Uh, risk factors for this condition includes mega duodenum, which may be caused by um, multiple uh, connective tissue disorders or other autoimmune conditions like systemic sclerosis, dermatomyositis, SLE, diabetes mellitus, amyloidosis, chronic uh, idiopathic intestinal pseudo obstruction, or Ogilvy syndrome. Mal rotation of midgut, congenitally shortened suspensory ligament of theodenum, uh, rapid and severe weight loss, hydrogenic alteration of anatomy due to surgeries, surgical correction of scoliosis, or chronic external compression by the hip spica cast are the other risk factors for this condition. And this is a small review of literature, uh, which is made, uh, which includes all the SMA-like syndromes so far published. Uh, these are, this includes, this is a compilation of all the SMA-like syndromes caused by SMB. And totally we have eight cases, out of which the major chunk is the duodenal compression between SMB and IVC. And all other minor cases includes anomalous venous anatomy, post-surgical, and uh, um, and duodenal compression between SMB and iota. All these comprises of one case each. 
and so our case becomes second case which is uh, which is causing duodenal compression between smd and aorta so the treatment options available for this for these patients are conservative that is gravitational maneuvers postprandial uh, prone knee chest and left lateral decubitus positioning nutritional augmentation that is multiple small feedings parenteral hyperalimentation and surgical bypass moving on to case 2 uh, this is a 47 year old male who presented with complaints of left loin pain for one month the pain was intermittent in nature and it was not relieved by the usual nsaids no history of renal uh, or ureteric calculi was given by the patient no recent fever episodes too we proceeded with ultrasound kuv which showed which showed us moderate left uh, hydronephrosis and proximal hydroureter in the study we were not able to demonstrate any proximal ureteric or left vuj calculus so no obvious cause for hun was detected in the study figure 5 is the longitudinal view uh, ultrasound image which is showing us hydronephrosis of left kidney and this is the figure 6 which is showing us proximal left hydroureter in order to confirm the in order to know more about the cause for the hun we proceeded with cct kuv which showed us uh, left moderate hydro hydroureteronephrosis up to the level of testicular vein crossover at the level of uh, l4 vertebra with smooth narrowing or kink the portion of ureter distal to the crossover was also unremarkable the testicular vein at uh, the crossover was most importantly of normal caliber that is 3.2 mm usually uh, you know, usually in other case in other similar cases what we saw was uh, the testicular vein was uh, pathologically altered but in our case it was normal in caliber and this is a figure 7 which is showing us cct kuv cortico medullary phase axial section image at the level of renal pelvis showing us left hun and this is figure 8 which is cct kuv excretory phase axial section which is beautifully showing us In the uh, ureter uh, at the uh, which is showing us ureter at the level of testicular vein crossover laterally what we are seeing is the proximal ureter which is enlarged in caliber and distal to that uh, uh, sorry and the medial to that we are seeing the ureter of normal caliber that is uh, distal distally to the testicular vein crossover and this is figure 8 that is see uh, sorry figure 9 that is cct kub venous and excretory phases coronal section at the level of left testicular vein crossover and uh, this is also showing the similar findings so our diagnosis is testicular vein syndrome discussion uh, moving on to discussion the risk factors for this condition includes congenitally enlarged testicular vein thrombophlebitic testicular vein or varicocele of testicular vein and this is a small review of literature which is made using the details of uh, the cases published so far and our case becomes the ninth case and in this review i have included the authors details then age of presentation of the patient then site of involvement and uh, vertebral level at which the testicular vein crossover happens and uh, our conclusions are the age of presentation ranges from 20 to 55 years among which the mean age was 37.5 years and uh, uh, we also found uh, it is also like seen that uh, the left sided uh, involvement is more common than right sided involvement and also the other thing was the testicular vein crossover which is happening at the l3 vertebral level was found to be more associated with the uh, testicular vein uh, testicular vein syndrome and treatment options available for the, uh, these patients include resection or transection of the vein at the crossing point uh, plus or minus excision or ureteral ureterostomy if the ureteral segment at the crossover is atrophic plus follow up for clinical improvement and with ibu if needed between 3 to 5 months post surgery moving on to the third case a uh, 15 year old normal female child with no developmental abnormalities came with complaints of left lower limb pain predominantly on the proximal aspect for past 4 days the patient had history of chronic constipation 
uh, which was uh, gradually progressive in nature and also gave us history of on and off episodes of abdominal pain. Uh, since the patient had lower limb pain and also swelling, we proceeded with uh, left lower limb venous Doppler. And what we saw was echogenic thrombus within the lumen of visualized portions of common uh, femoral vein extending into the superficial femoral vein. Uh, neither color flow nor uh, spectral wave pattern was demonstrated. These vessels were incompressible and uh, no flow augmentation was seen on distal compression. And we were completely uh, shocked with the findings of uh, DVT. And we were wondering what would have caused uh, a DVT in a normal, otherwise normal school going child. And also since the patient had complaints of abdominal pain, we proceeded with CCT abdomen, which showed us a literally huge finding. And this is a CCT abdomen, which shows us gross dilatation of sigmoid colon and rectum with significant fecal impaction, measuring so and so, extending up to the level of left hemidiaphragm, compressing and causing thrombosis of left common iliac, external iliac veins, and visualized portions of left common femoral vein. This is a uh, figure 10, which is showing a CCT abdomen arterial face coronal section uh, with uh, gross fecal impaction in the rectum and sigmoid colon, uh, which is extending up to the level of left hemidiaphragm. And this is figure 11, which is the CCT abdomen venous space sagittal section, which is showing us significant pressure effect on the urinary bladder and uterus of the patient. And this is figure 10, uh, sorry, figure 12, CCT abdomen venous space axial section, which is showing us the thrombosed left common iliac vein, whereas the right common iliac vein is seen, uh, is uh, showing normal contrast filling. And this is figure 13, uh, CCT abdomen venous space VR image, which is showing us non-visualization of the left common iliac, external iliac and common femoral veins, whereas on the contralateral side, we are seeing the normal opacification of the veins. And so our diagnosis becomes giant fecal impaction causing DVT. And risk factors for this condition includes Hirschsprung's disease, Chagas disease, diabetic neuropathy, neuropsychiatric diseases, inflammatory or neoplastic diseases, scleroderma, anorectal malformations, chronic bedridden patients, and long-term drugs like antidepressants and opioids. And this is a review of literature which is made based on the acute presentations of fecal impaction or fecaloma. And among this, uh, among the totally uh, like overall published cases, 15 cases of uh, fecal impaction presented with uh, uh, intestinal obstruction and five cases presented as toxic megacolon and uh, seven cases presented as acute urinary retention and two cases presented with DVT and three cases presented as an acute uh, as an abdominal mass and again there there was an overlap that is one case presented with both intestinal obstruction and acute urinary retention and one case presented with both toxic megacolon and acute urinary retention and treatment options available for these patients were conservative that is laxatives enema manual evacuation colonoscopic guided fragmentation of fecal matter and surgical intervention uh, will be required if complicated by bowel obstruction, toxic megacolon, or it had any underlying cause of Hirschsprung's disease. And this is an interesting fact that the colonoscopic installation of Coca-Cola is another interesting therapy that is tried and proved to be successful in dissolving calcified fecaloma in two of the literature published cases. And so here are the results. Why is it called tit for tat? We'll see that now. Tit, uh, for tit, we have unusual hollow viscous compressions by vascular structures. The examples are SMA-like syndrome or SMB syndrome and testicular vein syndrome. And for that, we have unusual vascular compressions by hollow viscous structures. And for that, we have giant fecal impaction causing DVT. So the conclusion is, Thus, abdomen being a compartment with various vital structures in close vicinity, an eagle eye for compression syndromes like these can aid in establishing appropriate uh, differential diagnosis. Uh, this will in turn, uh, turn lead to 
early detection of these rare syndromes and cause reduction in associated morbidity and mortality. Thank you, everyone.